In this video, we're going to look at some .NET collections you can use to increase the speed of your PowerShell scripts. So um, I'm bringing in a couple namespaces here. I'm bringing in system.collections, system.collections.generic, and system.collections.concurrent. I've added these so I don't have to type out the full names. So everybody knows that you shouldn't do this with an array. Uh, I've created an array, an empty array, and then I'm adding 10,000 items to it. So if we see how long this takes, you can see that took about uh, 1.1 seconds to add 10,000 items to that array. So typically, uh, what the suggested alternative is, is to use an array list. So you can see here I have an array list, I'm creating a new array list, and um, I am calling measure command, and I've actually incremented this by a magnitude. Um, so now it is 100,000 items rather than 10,000 items. So if we run that, you'll see that adding 10 times as many items took half the time. So it took 0.44 seconds to, um, to run that. Um, similarly, you could also use a list. So this is actually what the .NET um, team suggests over an array list. Array lists don't provide the same performance metrics as a list does. So you won't really notice it on things like this. So if I add all these items to this list, um, you'll see that it took about half the time as the array list. So in a large collection, that could mean something, but um, yeah, it took 200 milliseconds to add all those items to the list. Where you're gonna see the list really um, kind of behave a little bit quicker than um, an array list is in comparisons and looking for things in the list. So I'm gonna add a measure command here for the array list and one for the um, list. And I'm just using the PowerShell's where to look for um, one of the integers in this list. So you're gonna see that these behave pretty much the same. So I'll put about 80 milliseconds to look for that in the array list and about 78 milliseconds to look for it in the list. But because the array list is not typed, which means that everything that's stored in here is considered an object, we're not telling it what kind. Like in this one, we're actually saying it's an int. That means that when we do something like this, it has to do unboxing to figure out what type it is and do the comparison. So that took about six milliseconds. And if we do the same thing on the list, you can see it takes about half the time, 3.8 milliseconds. So in the scope of things here, this is not that big of a collection. Like if we had millions of objects or we're doing this repeatedly, that's where this type of thing could actually start to add up. Doing a single lookup like this, as you can see, it's not much different, but it is about twice as fast. All right, so let's look at another collection. So um, I am actually going to create two arrays and then we are gonna combine those arrays. So I have array one, um, and what I'm doing is I'm creating an even and an odd array. So the first one will be our even array, the second one will be our odd array. And what I pretty much wanna do is I wanna combine these um, into two arrays, and I only want uniques. So if I were to um, take those two arrays, put them together, use select object unique, and then um, combine them to put them in that third array, you can see how long that takes. So it's piping all these objects to um, select object, and we have 20,000 items in um, the two or between the two arrays. And you can see that took about 13 seconds. And if we look at the size of this array, it's 20,000 items, and they're all unique um, strings. But we can actually use uh, what's called a hash set to uh, achieve that much uh, faster. So let's actually put a hash set in here. So I have an even and an odd hash set. And I'm gonna do the same thing, except this time I am gonna do um, 100,000 items rather than 10,000 items. Then we are going to do, or check the counts of these. So let's just actually run that. You can see now there's 10,000 items in each one of those hash sets. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna combine those hash sets and what you could do is uh, use the union with uh, method of the hash set class. And that's actually going to um, union the two hash sets together and then return um, one with all the unique values. So let's execute that. And you can see that took um, 3.6 milliseconds and now we have 
um, 20,000 items in our new set. So you can see that was much, much, much faster than the 13 seconds it took to do the same thing with um, two arrays and uh, select object. All right, now let's take a look at sorting objects. So I am going to use an array of random values. So I'm just uh, creating um, 100,000 random values, storing them in an array, and then piping them over to sort object. So if we do this, you can see it takes um, 417 milliseconds to actually sort all the objects in that random array. But if instead we used a, um, a list, it actually offers a sort uh, command here. And if we do the same thing, you can see that it takes 10 milliseconds to sort that list. So this is kind of a bad example because this is not actually part of our measure command. I mean, we can add that in there and see what that is. But if you are actually populating the list as you go, um, rather than adding it into a, a default array like this one, then it wouldn't matter as much. But let's see what happens when we actually put the adding part in there. So it's about 224 milliseconds. So if we include the adding, it's about half, um, half the duration um, in order to sort all those items in that uh, list of arrays. Um, so yep, still twice as fast. All right, now we're going to get a little crazy. Um, there are additional ways to um, use even, uh, I guess, more complex um, collections in um, .NET. And one of those is the system collection concurrent namespace. So the idea with these collections are they are thread safe, which means that multiple threads can access them at the same time, which isn't the same case for arrays and lists and stuff like that. You have to be really careful uh, when multiple um, multiple threads are accessing the same collection. So a really simple example of this is a measure command here, or measure command around our for each parallel. So what I'm doing is I am going or creating a thousand integer array, and then I am piping it over to for each object parallel so that we can execute this in parallel. So um, Typically, I would think that you'd put something in these parallel blocks for um, long running processes or something like that, but this is actually very fast. So um, we're just doing math. We just want to multiply by, multiply by two and see how long it takes to do that over a thousand objects. And as you can see, it takes 1.78 seconds to for each parallel over a thousand objects. But if we actually took advantage of a concurrent queue, um, we could make this much faster. So a concurrent queue here um, is being defined as a queue of integers. And then I'm actually going to create um, 100,000 items instead of 1,000 and, and queue those into my concurrent queue. So now I have 100,000 items in my concurrent queue. Now, this one's going to take a little explaining. So I have a measure command around a for each object that's creating five thread jobs. So I'm using the, the start thread job module. So um, what this does is actually creates background run spaces to execute um, uh, the script block right here, which is this. So then I'm passing in um, the argument list of concurrent queue. So I'm actually passing in my concurrent queue. It currently contains um, 100,000 integers in it. And then uh, I'm just looping through. So we're, we're starting five thread jobs. They're going to be accessing the same concurrent queue at once. And um, while the queue has items, that's what peak does. So we're saying while the concurrent queue try peak, it will return true or false um, if there are items in the queue, and um, it will not remove them from the queue. Next, since there are, there are items in the queue, we call arg zero uh, try to queue, and that will actually remove the item from the queue. So if, if it successfully removes the item from the queue, then we want to multiply it by two. So um, we have five of these running at once across the same um, the same concurrent queue of items. So let's see how long that takes to run. You can see it takes thir 333 uh, milliseconds. So it's much faster than uh, the 1.7 seconds for even a thousand items that we put through um, for each parallel. So this was actually a hundred thousand items. So it was. Um, it was 100 times more data, and it was um, significantly faster than even that. 
Um, and we're gonna dial it up one more notch, and I'm gonna show you why um, concurrent queue is even cooler. So I'm gonna create a new concurrent queue, and um, just fill it with 10,000 objects again. Um, next, we're gonna start a thread job to actually add more objects. So we have a background run space that is gonna be adding an additional 10,000 or uh, yeah, 100,000 objects to our, um, our queue. So it's adding objects and we're gonna be removing objects at the same time. So we have a queue with 100,000 objects. We're gonna start a thread job that continues to add objects in the background. And then we are going to dequeue objects from um, from the queue at the same time. So we're kind of accessing it from all different angles. And that's what's really cool about concurrent queues is we can have this like multi-threaded processing um, inside PowerShell. So let's actually just take all this and we'll see how long it takes to um, you know, add 100,000 objects and queue 100,000 objects as a background job and then dequeue all 200,000 objects from the queue. And you can see it took 0.22 seconds. Let's just make sure that um, that works. So we don't have any errors. And if we actually look at um, has more data on one of these jobs, and we receive job um, ID 11. And let's look at the count of this. 2,583 items went through that particular start thread job. So, um, you know, it's going to depend on which thread is accessing them. Um, they're all going to have different counts. So we actually went over to 10. You can see that one actually processed 14,225. So it's um, fully multi-threaded using start thread job and uh, the concurrent queue to kind of store things. We have pretty much a producer thread that is producing items and then we have five consumer threads that are processing those items so i mean obviously you could do a lot of things with this um, rather than just simple math but um, it's just one way to take advantage of the cool .NET collections that are available to you in powershell so um, in this video we went over some of the unique powershell or .NET collections that are available to you in powershell